I want to get better and faster at hard surface modeling in Maya? Of course you do. That's why you clicked on this YouTube thumbnail. I compiled a list of my favorite six hard surface modeling hacks in Maya that are guaranteed to speed up your modeling workflow and make your hard surface models better in the video coming up. What's going on, you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi, and today we are looking at my top six hard surface modeling hacks in Maya. This video has been a long time coming. If you are a subscriber of the channel, uh, you know that a while back I made a video with another top six hard surface modeling hacks. Uh, I initially uh, planned to do a little bit more uh, hacks, more tips, more strategies. The video ran a little bit long and I had to cut it short. So I am a man of my word and I am coming back with an additional six hard surface modeling hacks so you guys can implement in your workflows when modeling in Maya. I also have a, a little bit of an announcement. Uh, I did create a hard surface modeling guide. Uh, if you guys follow the channel, uh, this is a great companion piece for you to actually download. Uh, and actually follow along. And it's really just meant to be a quick reference sheet. Uh, and uh, the great thing about it is that um, I actually included links to bookmark parts within my videos so you guys could actually get more information on a video form if you choose to by clicking those links in that PDF document. And you can download the hard surface modeling sheets by clicking the link down below. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. First on the list are topology patterns. And what are these useful for? Well, these are really just meant to be able to control your edge flow and achieve specific purposes. And the two specific patterns that I wanna talk about is the redirect pattern and the diamond pattern. There's plenty of uh, patterns out there. Uh, these are two that I like a lot and I find pretty useful and that's what I'm gonna be covering in the video. So the first one is the redirect. Just like the name sounds, this is used to actually redirect geometry around uh, and really imply a change in your uh, edge flow's direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start out with a simple grid. I'm gonna access my multi-cut tool. Uh, if the multi-cut tool could also be accessed via the mesh tools and the multi-cut right here. Uh, I just have this hotkey under M. Uh, so uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'll hold down control, middle mouse click, and that's gonna go ahead and put uh, this uh, edge loop here, right in the middle. And if we take a look at this, well, what if we actually wanted this uh, edge loop here, right, to actually change the direction? And this is where the redirect comes into play, okay? So if I wanted to change the direction here, what I would first do is uh, go in edge mode here, and I'm gonna do control and delete. A control and delete is gonna make sure that you actually delete the vert along with the edge itself, right? So now that's, that's deleted, we wanna go ahead and route this this way, right? So probably the easiest way to do it is actually just go in here, uh, and what you could actually do, and I do this quite a bit, if you're trying to insert an edge loop, but you actually want to break the continuity of it, what you could do is just put kind of this um, vert here, and this vert is going to add an extra, uh, obviously an extra vert here. It's going to break up the quads, so now this is no longer going to travel all the way through. So I do this quite a bit, so you could definitely just add this little random vert and that random vert is gonna go ahead and stop pretty much that loop from going all the way through. So I'm gonna hold down control, middle mouse click, and we see that we actually want this to flow this way, right? So we almost wanna cut in kind of this uh, smaller square right here in the corner. So we pretty much wanna route the geometry this way, right? Without extending it this way. Now the problem here is obviously that we have um, you know, this guy here, and we're not quadded all the way. So what we could do is a very simple fix to reroute this. We can take this uh, vert right here, delete it, since uh, pretty much it served this purpose. So I'm gonna take this one here, I'm gonna hold down, uh, I'm gonna hit W, 
hold down V to vert snap. And now you see that if we snap it here, and now we're all quieted, right? So this is a nice way of just rerouting this. So essentially what's gonna happen here is this is gonna become a, uh, some people call this a pole, a five star, uh, and this is pretty much just gonna indicate a change in direction. I'm gonna go to edit mesh, and then I'll go to uh, merge. And now uh, this should be merged. So if I click here, there we go, right? So there is our redirect pattern and we can go in here and do something quick where, you know, we go in here and if we bevel this and then we uh, went in the face mode, select that and I'm actually gonna undo that extrude because I, I need the settings back. So here I can go ahead and push this on the thickness and then I'll give this guy three divisions. I'll go in here, kind of uh, select these uh, faces here, delete that and then just uh, a multi-cut. Just a couple quick holding edges here, right? And then if we go to our sub D preview, uh, you see that um, we kind of have this ridge here and then we have that change of direction going, right? So the next pattern is the diamond pattern and this pattern is used to reduce uh, topology. Uh, so basically when you have a dense area of topology uh, going to an area that doesn't need as much edge flow. Uh, and the perf a perfect example would be uh, when you're creating like modeling the hand where uh, the hand is a lot more dense than maybe uh, the t topology that you want flowing onto the forearm. And this is a great example where you would use it, uh, but there's plenty of instances where you're gonna go from a dense area of topology to a pretty much a lower uh, area, and you wanna go ahead and reduce while keeping your uh, geometry all quieted. So let's take a look at how to create the diamond pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and enable the multi-cut tool here. And then I'm gonna hold down control and middle mouse click. That's gonna add basically a edge loop in between. So I'll go ahead and add some added topology. And then uh, here, I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating what looks to be a diamond, hence the name diamond pattern, right? So basically I'm gonna draw this. And basically uh, right here, uh, this is the areas that, or the edges that I'm gonna eliminate. And these are the edges that I'm gonna keep, right? So I'll go here back to edge mode and I'll shift click one edge here and then I'll shift click the other one that's gonna select that range. And then I'll kill the uh, edge right there in the middle of the uh, diamond. And I'll repeat this on the other side. I'll hold down control delete. And then pretty much our diamond pattern is done. Uh, I can go to vert mode here and then to fully just uh, visualize the diamond here, we can go ahead and uh, bring that vert down. And now we see that uh, basically we had edges here, we condensed them and we kept our mesh all quieted. The next hack on the list is editing your pivot and it might be one of the more simpler ones, but it is a very powerful one because if you can edit your pivots, you have more control over your transforms and you get to make more precise movements, which are pretty important for symmetrical hard surface models, right? And it gives you a lot of control. So let's go ahead and take a look on how to do so. So one of the um, things that I use uh, the uh, edit pivot a lot is to actually just move objects and placing them, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a, a cylinder here and by default, the pivots are uh, basically aligned to the center, right? So if I wanted to basically uh, snap this in the middle of the grid here, right? I'm just gonna take this and move it out the way. Uh, one of the things I could do is basically use that vert to actually snap the pivot to and then move this over to the middle of the grid, right? So I'll hit D to enable my snap pivot tool, right? I'm sorry, my edit pivot uh, mode and then I'll hold down V. Now I'm able to move that pivot to that vert, and now I can go back to my move tool, hold down X, and then just move that to the center, right? So this is great for just placing objects, uh, and especially if you're 
working with a ground plane. If you move that pivot uh, and snap it to a vert on the bottom, it becomes very, very beneficial. Um, the other thing that I use it for is also um, extruding things and manipulating uh, movements around certain pivot points, right? So maybe here, I can take this edge, right? And I'll hold, uh, I'll do a quick extrude. So I'll move this. And maybe I wanna go ahead and start curving this guy here, right? Um, but I know that this vert is already at the place that I want it. And I only wanna go ahead and rotate from this vert, right? And this happens a lot where you actually wanna manipulate or keep one vert still and actually uh, rotate along uh, a certain pivot point or vert in this case, right? So I'll hit D again, I'll hold down V, right? And then I'll go to my rotate tool. And you see that uh, we can go ahead and actually snap, right? And rotate along this pivot, right? So we can go ahead and do this again, or I'll just extrude this way. And once I figure out that that's as far as I want this vert to go, I can hold down D again, V, snap here, and then we can go ahead and do this as well. So let's just say that we have this edge established. We don't wanna touch that. We don't wanna change that angle, but we do wanna push this vert, right? Without breaking up this uh, edge right here, this angle. And you can see it's pretty hard, right? Um, eyeballing this, right? So what we could do is if we hit D, we actually have two options. So once we hit D, you see that by default, it will align to this edge, but we actually wanna leave the pivot where it is. We just wanna change the orientation. So for that, if we hold down control, and now we click on this edge, we see that the pivot remains where it's at, but it took the orientation of that edge. So now from here, I can go back to move, and then push this uh, vert along that edge since it was oriented that way. So the next two hacks are actually separate, but I stack them together a lot in my workflows. And if you watch my channel, if you follow some of my videos, you'll actually notice that I use this a lot where I break a more complex uh, hard surface model into a repeatable pattern and then I apply a deformer to actually bend it into place. So the first leg of this is creating a repeatable pattern where the bulk of the work is done via symmetry. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here, I'll go ahead and start with the, um, the first part of this magazine here, right? Of this clip. So um, I'll go ahead and get my multi-cut tool and then I'll hold down control, middle mouse click. That's gonna go ahead and add a edge loop right down the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and reroute this. And you'll find me doing this a lot where I just cut into my geometry and then I uh, worry about just making it all pretty and I'll quad it. So what we'll do here is we'll take this edge and we'll put it towards uh, this here. And this is creating a rerouting uh, pattern, right? Uh, what I covered earlier. And then from this one, we'll go ahead and connect this here. So I'll take this edge here, I'll delete it. And then what I'll do from this point is just add with the multi-cut tool, holding down control, middle mouse. And then I can connect this here. Looks like I have an extra vert. Just delete that. Um, and if we wanna go ahead and actually straighten this out, uh, this is using also a previous hack, is the use of pivot points, right? So if I want this line to be straight, uh, what I can do is select uh, both of these edges here, right? And then um, if we uh, take the scale tool, right, we see that we're affecting this edge here. So essentially what we wanna do is we wanna scale from this vert right here. So I'll hit D again, hold down V, snap, scale, right? Now it's gonna scale from this vert. And now we have that straight edge. Um, so that looks pretty good. And from here, I could finagle this vert a little bit. All right, so now it's time to mirror this over in our X and this is nice and centered in the world. So I'll shift right click, I'll go to mirror. And then we will mirror this guy in the X. Either object or world will work since our pivot is right there, but I'm just gonna select world here, hit mirror, and obviously this is cranked up way too much, so holding down control, 
uh, we could actually fine tune this uh, quite a bit. Uh, usually a lot of times I'll just go in here and put a uh, 0 0.01. And then here is the first part of the pattern. So from this point, what we can do is create uh, two more copies, right? So what I can do here is select this guy and then um, we could actually start doing some of the modeling work as well, right? Um, so I'll go ahead and select this guy here with the holding down tab. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this. And then I'll go ahead and extrude. And I'll give this guy some thickness here. And we could add individual edge loops, uh, but in this instance, uh, we could just take the divisions and just add uh, three divisions, right? So if we just go ahead and smooth this out, you see that um, that's being uh, held uh, quite nicely, right? So from this point, uh, I also know that I need to take care of these guys here, right? So I'm basically trying to do most of the bulk of the work right here when we have pretty much one iteration of the pattern. So I'll delete this here, that looks good. And then let's go ahead and mirror this uh, or actually uh, duplicate this uh, two more times. So I can hit Control D, W, right? And then I can move this. So I'll just hit D on my keyboard, V to vert snap here, W again, and then V to go ahead and vert snap here. And then I'll just go ahead and do this one more time. The pivot right here is already at the corner since that was the previous thing that or command that we did. So I'll hold down V again. And now we have pretty much our pattern, right? Or the first uh, bottom part of the pattern. Um, so I'll go to object mode, select all three pieces here, go to mesh, and then we'll go to combine. And this is combined, right? But uh, these verts are not merged. So what I can do here, go back to edit mesh, and then we'll do a merge command on a low threshold. And now, um, these all should be merged, which they are. So I'm gonna go ahead and mirror this on the uh, Y axis here. And I'm gonna ensure that my pivot is here. Uh, if we do world, it's just gonna flip it here, which we could have just moved this down, but sometimes I just rather uh, control the mirroring by the placement of the pivot. And I have to uh, basically move my shape all around the world, right? So I'll shift right click, I'll go to mirror, options here and then I'll hit Y and you see that if we go mirror in the world right it's it's flipping it on the world but since we move the pivot here uh, we can just change this to object and there we go right so um, the next thing that I'll do is I want to give this guy some thickness uh, and also uh, just as a rule of thumb I don't like having kind of these uh, poles here or these uh, five stars um, close to where I gotta drop a holding edge. So usually I like to give myself a little bit more breathing room. So I uh, will basically select these guys here, shift click and then select that range, extrude out and then we can do a um, offset here, right? Just to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room and just add some thickness to the shape. And now what we can do is actually uh, extrude outward, right? Um, but what I will do at this point is um, add some holding edges. So this is pretty much just the fencing that I talk about. So I'm gonna add a holding edge there, there. And obviously you can do this uh, once we add some thickness but I just rather have it here because once I extrude, you see that it's gonna push that edge there, right? Um, so now the only thing I really need is just to add one more to completely hold this one. So I'll go back to my multi-cut tool and then there, and there we go, right? So that's holding down, um, that's holding that edge pretty good. So this is looking good at this point. Um, I am gonna do pretty much go to my, um, assign a new material and I'll give this guy a blend. I like to give uh, my hard surface objects just a high specularity. Um, so I know that, um, you know, if I have any pinching or any weird areas, so that looks pretty good. Um, so the last thing that I'll do is I'll take this here 
And then I wanna make sure that my pivot is here as well. And that's just kind of a habit. Um, so I'll hit D, V, and then put this guy right here. And then I'll shift right click and then I'll do a mirror. And then we need to mirror this guy on the X. Uh, I'll go ahead and go to object. And there we go, All right? So that is our finished uh, mesh. And then uh, this is gonna segue into the next hack, which is actually using deformers. So the next hack is pretty much the next leg of this, which is the deform part, right? So here, uh, obviously this was a lot easier uh, creating this model in uh, pretty much using the luxury of the world spacing, but now we have to apply or deform it into its final shape, right? So what I'll do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and move this pivot again. So I'll hold down, um, I'll hit D and then I'll hold down V here, snap it, W, and then I'll hold down X just to vert snap it here, right? So now what we can do from this point is select this and we can go to deform and we can go to nonlinear and we can go to bend, right? So we'll hit create here and all these deformers pretty much have this handle uh, and pretty much what we wanna do with the bend is align the handle with our shape, which is already done for us. But if this was laying down, uh, we would have to basically uh, rotate this uh, handle here. We could hold down J to constrain to uh, 15 degree increments, but the handle is already aligned for us, so we don't have to worry about that part. So I'll go to here to the bend options, and I just want to go ahead and initially give it some curvature, right? So we see that this is starting to work, right? But the problem is that we only want it to bend from uh, this part here, the lower part, right? So one thing that we can do is we can just take uh, the uh, handle here, the deformer handle, and just move this up, right? So we could do that. Um, this does look a little bit wonky. So what we'll do here is we'll actually zero out the, um, the low bound, right? So if we zero that out, we see that we don't have pretty much any bend uh, on this uh, upper area, right? Uh, and we could still move this if we wanted to. And we could just increase the uh, high bound here, right? So uh, this deformation goes all the way through. And now we could basically start playing with the curvature again. So I'm gonna use a value of 25 for the curvature. Now keep in mind if you delete the deformer without deleting the history, um, you're actually just gonna basically return to your uh, default object that you had. So if you wanna bake it in, uh, you have to delete your history. So if we go in here and we delete this, you see that it snaps back. So we could just take this object here, edit, delete by type, history, and now that deformation is baked in. Next on the list, I wanna talk about plugins. And plugins uh, in Maya can make your life a lot easier. It, they can save time. And I'm gonna go ahead and demo a plugin that I've used uh, in some instances. But a plugin should not be used as a crutch, only as a time saver, right? So if you don't know how to do something the right way, just with the default package, I would work on your core skills. And then once you've kind of mastered uh, pretty much doing that right from scratch, uh, whatever that plugin kind of facilitates, learn how to do it the right way, the hard way, uh, just within the tools in Maya. And then if you just need to save time, then you can go ahead and do it do it via a plugin, right? So this plugin right here is called the AM Toolkit. Um, and it's a great plugin. I've actually used it to model uh, this machine gun right here that, that you're seeing. And obviously, um, the topology on this, since it, you really use it in conjunction with bullings, is not gonna be ideal. So uh, this is kind of goes back to saying um, what I was saying earlier is that, you know, learn how to model uh, with good topology with all quads. Uh, that does take a good chunk of the time. 
but sometimes you don't need to have perfect topology to create a model. If you're doing 3D printing, if maybe you are creating a high res, uh, and then you can just basically transfer that uh, data as sloppy as it is uh, from a map, that's gonna work fine. So not all pipelines require a perfect um, model with perfect topology in our quads. And if your if your pipeline does require that, well, you already have this, the the tool sets or the skill sets to do so. Right, you guys want to check out and support um, the creator of the plugin. Uh, you can go ahead and check out his uh, Gumroad page. And like I said, I have a link down below. And last but not least is kit bashing, and this kind of goes along the same lines of uh, basically using plugins. Uh, because you actually can buy kit bashing kits and basically use them for your hard surface models. But, and basically what kit bashing is, is taking little components, little hard surface for this example or for this video would be hard surface components and incorporating them into your model, right? And there's two ways of going about them is obviously you could create them yourself, which is what I recommend and at least have the knowledge to uh, basically create these little uh, bolts or little detailing pieces yourself, or you can buy them, right? But what happens is if too early in the pipeline, you do start kit bashing and without really just understanding how to model it yourself, there might be a point that uh, maybe you're in a production or a situation where you can't find the asset that you need in your model and you have to model it yourself and you don't have the knowledge, right? So that's where using kit bashing as a crutch or avoiding the, the basically the fundamentals of modeling uh, can get you in problems, right? So here um, in this uh, apocalypse uh, character that I have, right, um, you, you'll see that I have a, a couple of uh, just details. Um, and this one right here um, was actually pulled from uh, this RoboCop here, right? I'll put it right there. Uh, you'll see that uh, that little pattern um, you know, was pulled from there, that shape. Um, we could also see that this guy as well was also pulled from um, RoboCop, right? That RoboCop model, right? So I did model him, but, you know, I kind of played around with it. There was no point in me recreating that. So I kit bashed it. I took those pieces, exported them out, and brought them in, and I used them for this model, right? So that's pretty much, uh, it's a simple concept, right? Um, you see right there that um, that same piece is being used again as well, all right? So yeah, uh, essentially once uh, you become more experienced with hard surface modeling, uh, you're gonna create your own little library. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, buying, uh, kit bashed, um, you know, uh, components, um, but just have the knowledge behind it to be able to build your own. That's the end of the video, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and hopefully uh, these six hard surface modeling hacks within Maya will help you become a better and more proficient hard surface modeler. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know your thoughts on the comment section down below and make sure to like the video as well. Until we meet again, I will catch you next time.